Black Queen. Failure ain't an option. You looking clean, clean, clean. Failure ain't an option. Hey guys, it's Jess. Welcome back to my channel. So today's video, you guys already know. We've got a suggestions video coming your way. But before we get into that, I just want to thank Audible for sponsoring today's video. Can we give a round of applause for... Okay. So if you've never heard of Audible, they are the leading provider of spoken word entertainment all in one place. Audible has audiobooks, they have podcasts, they have one of my new favorite things, they have the sleep sounds for you guys, and mostly for me. They've got the sleep tracks, like the meditation, they have ASMR, they have bedtime stories, they've got reflections, <laughs> they have Audible originals, so much Audible entertainment in one place. One thing I love about Audible is that it helps me to get two things done at once, like I really wish that I could sit down and read, but for me, just sitting down and reading, it doesn't work for the type of life that I have, and that doesn't work for a lot of people. So something that I really love about Audible is that it reads it out loud for you, like you can be cleaning the kitchen, you can be working out at the gym, you can be braiding your hair, hello, and your audiobook is being read out to you. So you're still getting everything you need out of reading without reading okay <laughs> so every month audio members get one free book and full access to the plus catalog and the plus catalog is just where they have all of their exclusive titles and podcasts and things of that sort so if you want to try audible you can try audible for free for 30 days you can just go to audible.com slash only one jess or you can text only one jess to 500 500 so much entertainment from those podcasts or wisdom from different audiobooks so it's definitely extremely helpful. So I encourage you guys to slide on over to audible.com slash only one just and give Audible a try. So without further ado, let's get on into today's video. So for today's video, you guys already know we have another suggestions segment. Since I promised you guys I would start doing these more regularly, this is the second one in like two weeks or three weeks, I don't know, but you ask and I'm delivering. So I asked you guys on my last suggestions video to email me at askonlyonejess.com. And basically, if you don't know what suggestions is, my name's Jess, hello. It's basically when you guys email me your like life scenarios and your life questions, ask me for advice, and I give you my suggestion. Now, I just want you to remember, it's just a suggestion. So if your boyfriend breaks up with you, your mom kicks you out, you flunk out of school, don't blame me because it was just a suggestion. Okay, that's great. So let's just get right on into these questions that I got so far. So since they're on my email instead of my Instagram, I'm reading them from my laptop this time. So don't mind me if I'm looking down. All right. Hey Jess, I am 17 years old. I really need your advice on two things. First, I have a boyfriend and we have been together for three years. Okay, so you guys started dating when you were 14. Kinda young, but okay. A little Cory and Topanga going on here, but that's fine. We love each other dearly. We are also the same age, so he's a 17 year old boy also, that's fine. My family knows him and it's all good, but I don't think my dad really likes him. I've asked my dad if he has anything against him and he said no. He also said he's still watching him from the sidelines and he hasn't made a decision yet. Well, I don't agree with that, and my boyfriend, and he makes my boyfriend a bit uneasy when he's around by staring a little too hard. My dad wasn't the most faithful when it comes to being in a relationship, although he married my mom. He never changed. She's saying he married my mom, but he never changed. He was unfaithful, and they separated after she was born. All right, so yada, yada, yada. I think my dad is probably just scared that my boyfriend will do to me what he did to my mom. My question is, how do I go about telling my father that my boyfriend is not like that and to make him see what I see? She also said her dad doesn't live with them. So, okay. All right, so I'm gonna speak from your dad's perspective really quick. Your dad, he's your dad. He's looking out for you. He loves you dearly. So any little boy that comes up into his daughter's life, he's going to side eye, of course. Um, much older than you and my dad was side eyeing my boyfriend a little bit at first. He was like, what? My dad has side-eyed every man I brought home up until this very age. And I'm way older than 17, okay. <laughs> um, so I really, I can't be mad at your dad. As long as he's not being rude or disrespectful, I can understand your dad being a little like, you know, 
not really giving his all into like friending up your boyfriend or like hey hey son how you doing let's go fishing or whatever um, I think it's really very normal for a dad to do that and it's just because he loves you it's, he just loves you yeah and it also seems like he may be projecting a little bit from his past experiences but he's not completely wrong um, boys are going to be boys and at 17 it's a little young so I just encourage you to continue to live your life and you know continue to foster your relationship with your boyfriend and don't worry too much about your dad especially if he doesn't live with you I assume that um, your, you, your boyfriend, and your dad aren't together that much. Don't spend too much time on trying to convince your dad, like, Dad, look, he's the, he's not like other men, he's different. Your dad's not gonna hear any of that. Your dad just wants to see actions. Your dad will believe it over time when he sees it. So you're really just gonna have to deal with it right now. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I wish you guys the best. I'm sure he's a great young man, and by the time you guys get 22, 23, 24, if you're still together and he wants to marry you, and your dad can see that he's been faithful all this time and he gives you his blessing, then it'll all be worth it. But at this point, your boyfriend just has to continue to prove himself, continue to treat you like a princess, and your dad will eventually fall in line. But I can't blame your dad too much for, you know, not fully giving in and being all buddy-buddy with this 17-year-old boy because he loves you and he just wants to make sure that you don't get hurt. All right, let's see what's next. All right, we got the ones that say, hey, this might be long. By the way, the first one is the only one that I read ahead of time, and then I ran out of time, and I was like, let's just do this. So the rest of these, these are my first time reading these, so excuse me as I get myself together and get my thoughts together um, on the fly. There's this guy, we've been friends going on three years now. So backtrack to when we first met 2019, we clicked immediately, spending the whole day together, doing homework together till 1 a.m., very flirtatious, and I caught feelings. Apparently, he had a girlfriend back home. Ah, <sighs> don't they always? I'm so sorry. He's from New York and we go to school in Connecticut. And he had my best friend tell me because he didn't want to hurt my feelings. So I started to distance myself, but once I did, he started being even more clingy and flirty. Being that we both have a lot of chemistry and we're friends, we fell back into the play relationship cycle. She said the, the, play, rela the play relationship cycle. Mm -hmm. It's now 2021 and it's still like this. And he, do he does boyfriend things for me, although he still has a girlfriend and I don't know what to do. Girl, what are you doing? Oh my gosh. I really like him and we have a great friendship. But at the end of the day, I'm the one in my feelings over him and he has a girlfriend. She said, I'm 20 and no, we've never had an in-depth conversation about how we feel. Da, 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 da. All right, she said, but if he didn't like me, he wouldn't do or say some of the things that he does. And I know it's capable for a guy to like you, but not enough or wrong person, right time. But I need closure without jeopardizing a friendship. Um, sis, I just want to start off by saying, you know, I love you, right? <clears throat> you know, I love you, right? First of all, I'm disappointed in you. Do you know that this man has a boyfriend? Oh, wait. <laughs> Not a boyfriend. You know that this man has a girlfriend, yet you're still allowing him to use you. He's using you. That's what he's doing. Because when he goes back home, he's with his girlfriend and he's not thinking about you. But when he goes back to school, he won't cuff you. He's not, he's not making you his girlfriend because he has one already. So you're a side piece. I'm sorry, can I keep it real? I'm so sorry, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just keeping it real because somebody has to. You are now his side chick. I don't know if you guys are doing anything physical, it's none of my business, but you're allowing, you're, you're like plastering it with the word friendship, like, oh, we're friends, we're best friends, but he's doing boyfriend things for you? I don't like it, no. He's canceled and I don't love that for you. I don't love that for his girlfriend. It's not fair. I speak about fairness a lot because it's not fair. <laughs> I am not about to encourage anyone to have the, the play play relationship. You know, like when people have like work husband, oh, that's my work husband and then I got my man at home or that's my work husband but he's married. That stuff is dangerous. I don't like it. But in the grand scheme of things, you're getting used. You're pouring your feelings into this guy who will not commit to you because what again he has a girlfriend and it's not you especially because you're giving him everything he needs while he still gets to have his girlfriend I think like I always say a conversation needs to be had you need to tell him look 
we can't keep doing this. Like, if you're not gonna be in a relationship with me, I can't be as close to you as we once were. Even if you guys, like, you said, how do we talk, how do I talk to him without jeopardizing the, the friendship? The friendship is gonna get messed up a little bit because you like him. So you guys can't continue to be as close as you guys are and think that your feelings are gonna go away. They're not, they're only gonna, going to get stronger. Or if you guys talk and you decide to still be friends and then he starts pulling away, animosity is gonna grow and you're gonna start to hate him. So I just really want the best for you and you deserve someone who's going to give you everything. Not just do boyfriend things, but be the title of an actual boyfriend and make you his actual girlfriend and not have a side piece on the side. So, cut it, cut it, young lady. Ma'am, something's in my eye. <laughs> I'll always say this, I'm not saying he's not the one for you, but he's not right now. He might not be at all, but um, he's not right now because he has a girlfriend and it's not you. I said it's not you. Not you. It's not you, baby, I'm sorry. Next. Hey girly, going on three years subscriber. Hey, my good sis, three years, that's just dedication. I've kept my eye on this guy for about five years now. All right, hold on, let me just pause really quick. Also, I don't, you know, I'm, I love doing this, but I just want you to know, because I got a comment in my last video talking about like, oh, uh, this, this video is 45 minutes long and all you're talking about is relationships and boys and break, like, these are the questions I'm getting. People having relationship problems. We all, we're all going through it together, okay? So I'm just, I'm just trying to help. I'm just trying to help. Anyways, I've kept my eye on this guy for about five years now. Okay, five years now. We're best friends, just like how I am with my girls. I tell him practically everything, except those things that you just keep to yourself. And he knows everything about me. My favorite color, food, place, what I like in a guy, all that fun stuff. Speaking of which, knowing that, he still can't pick up the fact that he checks off every box on my list. I know everything about him, the same things that he knows about me. I get mixed signals, but I think that's only because he has a girlfriend, but he's been on and off, for, on and off with for five years. Is this a homewrecker series? Do I need... I'm not about to play with y'all. Okay, all right. Y'all are... <laughs> we got a homewrecker. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I really do love you, but y'all, come on, man. All right, his girlfriend is a brat and is stuck up, at least, to everyone ex uh, at least to everyone else except him. She's also very clingy and tries to restrict who he hangs out with. Me and her have had constant fights, physical and speech-wise. And I think that's because she feels threatened. Rightfully so. Everyone always assumes we're a couple just because we're always together and we know each other so well. The thing is, I don't, if she's, I'm not, I don't, it's either I don't know, I don't think if she, sh, I don't know why she should be threatened, I don't think, I don't know. You're missing a word so I'm not sure what you're trying to say there. But then she says, I don't know if I like him 100% or not. You know that weird transition from friends to crush? Yeah. Should I, should I listen to my gut and pursue him because he seems to like me or should I resist to stop more drama? Thank you, love you. Oh, I know who you are. I see your name here. I've been seeing you in my comments. Hey, girl. Hey. All right, so my good sis. The question is, should you pursue him, right? Should you pursue him because he seems to like you? So, here's my thing. If he liked you, you wouldn't have to pursue him. Especially if this best friend, knowing so much about each other has been going on for five years and he hasn't pursued you yet, I would say he might not like you as much as you think. Because five years, that's, um, that's a long time for someone to like, for a man to like a woman and not say anything or not try anything or not pursue a relationship. And, Seems to be taken as well. He's he's in a situationship. I don't know if they're on right now or off, but he's been on and off with the same girl for five years. Yeah, I don't think she's going anywhere anytime soon. The whole on and off stuff, it doesn't usually make it to the finish line. She might eventually be gone, but she seems to be like his safe spot right now. 
and I don't know if you really want to be in a relationship with someone who's con constantly on and off with this girl. She doesn't seem to be going away. You know? You're saying you don't know why she feels threatened, yet you basically express that you kind of like him and that you guys spend a lot of time together. Uh, if, I, if my boyfriend had a girl like that in his life, that they're always on the phone, they know everything about each other, people think they're dating because they're always together. I mean, I wouldn't feel threatened for myself. I would feel, I would feel, you know, bad. For, you know, she should feel threatened because I'm gonna have to beat somebody up. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm just kidding, ladies. We don't fight. We don't fight the women. We fight the men. Okay. If your man is cheating on you or doing something grimy with another woman, you don't fight her. You fight him. You beat him up. And then if she knew about you but continued on, then you beat her up. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Anyways, um, yeah. I don't, long story short, no, I don't think you should pursue him because for five, five years, if he liked you, he would have said something. So I don't know how much he really likes you. He might just be using you as a comfort or he might really just think you guys are just friends. You know, I don't know, sis. I would, I would lay back, lay low on that one and kind of start moving on to somebody else. Hey Jess, love you by the way. And I love when you, I love you too. All right. I have a best friend from high school. I'm in my late 20s now, girl, me too. <laughs> We've always been ride or die, but in the last couple of years, I gave my life to the Lord. And I've gotten a new and I have gotten new college and work friends who are mostly Christian. I feel more comfortable talking to them about my struggles. I feel like my conversations with my friend are very one-sided now. It's just her talking about things that I can no longer relate to so I don't really have a response. I know she thinks I'm shutting her out, but I really have nothing to say. I feel like I can't talk to her about God and my struggles as a Christian. My boyfriend hurt me in the past, three years ago, and it's been forgiven and we moved on, but she just can't get over it. All my other friends have gotten over it because they see the changes. So I can't talk to her about my boyfriend either. What do I do? All right, so in a way, I really do, I feel like I've said this before, but sometimes I feel like friendship breakups are like harder than like, um, what's the word? I don't know, I can't think of it. Like boyfriend and girlfriend or whatever you're into, break, relationship, like, into, I don't know, you know what I'm saying. I feel like they're harder. Some friendships really are not made to last forever. People do grow apart and that's okay. Like, it is possible to remain good friends with someone who doesn't have the same beliefs as you, but it's kind of going to where the Bible says, don't be unequally yoked. And it's not just talking about in like marriage or um, what is that word? Friends too. So it's really hard to be glued onto someone who's not in the same faith as you because you guys are not into the same things anymore. She might want to go to the club on Saturday and you might like, mm, I don't really want to go, you know? And I don't know, like do things that you're not into anymore. So it's kind of hard to continue that on. What's your question? <laughs> What do you do? With everything, I always say it's important to have a conversation. Converse, communication is really key because obviously she probably feels the same way you do. Like, oh, she's not the same or we don't talk anymore and blah, blah, blah. Um, it's just important that you guys just sit down and just be honest with each other. Like, I do feel like this relationship can be salvaged as long as she respects your beliefs. Like, you don't have like you can still y'all can still go to the mall together y'all can still watch a movie together like y'all can do each other's hair like have girls nights i don't think that it has to be like that this is the end all be all there's still other things you guys can do together that both non-christians and christians can do like i said like going to the mall watching a movie getting your nails done like i still think it's important if you really love this girl that you guys at least try like you can initiate like hey want to go to dinner hey let's go to the beach just try and there's other things that you guys can talk about other than your boyfriend you don't have to i guess you guys you don't want to talk about your boyfriend with her then talk about something else that doesn't have to be the main conversation okay so i would say have the conversation with her and do like one last effort to really see if you can salvage it by trying to do other things that you both can agree on. And like I said, as long as she respects that you don't do the things that you used to do, but like, hey, look, we can still do other things. Being a Christian doesn't mean you're dead. You can still do things. So you guys can just collaborate on those things and it should be fine. And then, hey, who knows? Like you might be in her life in order to help lead her to Christ. So 
have you invited her to church or invited her to a small group or you know just just try just try let's try maybe you've tried all these things before and if you have already then maybe it's just time for y'all to just go left go right oops go left go right and just call it a day you know hey i'm currently in a long distance relationship with my boyfriend we have been together for two years and long distance for one we take a lot of trips and talk twice a day every day we were together before when we were younger but it didn't work out and none of us were actually ready and ended up hurting each other our relationship now is like night and day and we took the break we needed to grow and reflect anyway he's in school for the next three years i'm 26 and so is he so he'll be done you guys will be done well he'll be done when he's 29 okay i'm solid in my career and i'm ready for the next step we love each other and we are each other's person but he wants to wait until <laughs> but he wants to wait until school is done to get married because of how he sees a husband should provide for his family i make enough for the both of us but he's resilient am i just being impatient and not understanding the situation i live alone and he lives with his parents girl like i feel like i'm literally about to look myself in the mirror and speak for myself <laughs> so let me just shed some light on this situation because um i think it's important you've got some things to think about first of all are you ready to get married and have to pay every single thing for your husband now because y'all are one i'm almost positive that when you get married your parents aren't paying for anything for you guys anymore especially his because he's gonna be like you thought you was growing you wanted to get married so that means since there's one income and it's yours you're paying all the food you're paying for his car insurance you're paying for his gas you're paying for his food you're paying if something happens to his car his tires roll off you're paying for his tires you're paying for his dentist appointments you're paying for his health insurance you're gonna have to pay for every single thing for this man because he has no money are you ready to do that are you ready to do that for three more years can you do that for the next three years and think it's not going to cause any strain on your relationship you have to think about that because I had to think about that too. When I was like, look, I want to get married today. I've got the money. We can take care of this. But it's like, what if he, say you wake up one morning, he tap me on my shoulder and I think we about to get it on. He's like, babe, I need money for lunch today. Oh, also, my car insurance is due today. You got me? Oh, oh, my phone bill is due today. Or, oh, oh, my phone screen cracked. Can you give me money to um fix my phone screen? That, just saying that, I'm like, ew, that's unattractive. <laughs> love is love and love conquers all but like that is gonna cause a strain on your relationship so what do I always say a conversation needs to be had is there a way for him to get a part-time job while he's in school because three years of your man not working that's a lot that's a lot of time I personally I might have to agree with him on this because no also no man wants to have to ask his girl for every dime you know like that's definitely not it that's not it at all and it's gonna make him feel like less of a man that you're making all the money he and he's not making anything well you never really say he doesn't have a job but you didn't say that he did either so I'm, I'm just assuming that he doesn't i kind of agree with him i hate to say it because I feel you. I'm only I'm only thugging it out because I've only got like a year left, okay? And I can deal with that. But if mine was three years, it just wasn't it just would not work for me. Even if he said, Look, I wanna get married right now, but just know for the next three years, baby, you gotta pay for everything. It's like it sounds good in your head because you're like, okay, cool, I, I just love conquers all. I just wanna be married to you. But if you're being realistic about everything, it's it's a little much and God forbid, not God forbid, but if y'all had a child within those three years and then you have to take care now of him and your child you have to pay for everything and i would hate for him to feel like he has to like drop out or go to part-time now so he can get a job and like do part-time school i don't know i'm so sorry like i really am so sorry because i feel you sis but I, he needs three years is too long i think it's too long for a man to be in a marriage without a job while he's still in school i mean other people may disagree and that's to totally okay different strokes for different folks but um i'm thinking also more about you i feel like three years is too long for you to be supporting someone in your home and it's not like he's a bum or anything i know he's working to get 
you know, to the place where he'll be able to help provide and support. But those three years, I feel like it's going to be extremely tough. If you're okay with that and you're ready for that, you can honestly say is you're going to be fine with that, paying all his bills, car insurance, not just bills. He needs new clothes, buying him underwear, you know, everything for the next three years. That's on you, but you'd also have to convince him to be okay with that. And I don't really see any man being okay with that, you know? So I'm sorry. I just, yeah, sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Like I'm usually all team love and team marriage, but that's a tough one. That is a tough one, my good sis. So I'm just going to end it with this one right here. Okay. She said, this is, a, this is a different one. It's long, but I'll try my best to make it short. So you give great advice and I can't afford therapy. So here we go. Okay, sis, let me see if I can help you. So me and my boyfriend have been dating for three going on four years now. Little background, I moved 12 hours away to attend college in the North. So all my family is in the South. When we met, I was 19 going on 20 and he was 22. Like any new couple, we were in that lovey-dovey stage. We moved in together in less than a year and everything was still fine between us. He's a nice guy, by the way. All I could ask for. And he's also my first. Love that for you. All right. Fast forward. We have a two-year-old now together. Ever since I got pregnant and gave birth, I just completely lost myself, my motivation, my drive, my passion for just everything. Oh my God, I'm sorry. I had a business going for myself, but I put it on hold. I also put school on hold just cause I'm not in the right headspace. And I don't know why or what's wrong with me. It's also a miracle if I find the energy to cook. I just went downhill and I'm ashamed. I'm a completely different person and I don't like this version of me at all. It feels like depression that I can't find my way back out of my old self. When it comes to sex, it's like I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Nothing is the same between us. We can have one good night and then like three bad nights. I never have the energy to have sexual activity anymore and it's breaking us apart. It's been nice, he's been nice about it for a while now, but he threatens to leave sometimes or mentions I that or mentions that I need to straighten up before I lose him. <clears throat> the kicker is right now that we're on baby number two. I've made no improvements and I highly doubt a second child is going to help me find myself again. I can just tell that he's trying but his manly needs are taking over and I don't have much time. It's hard for me to pleasure him in any way. I guess the question is, should I just let him go? I do want us to work out, but it's hurting me more that I'm not able to gift him with things or show my appreciation towards him or simply satisfy his needs. He makes sure I have everything I need as well. I have a crappy job of only paying my car note and, and my half of the bills. Afterwards, I'm left with, I think, 60 cents left in my pocket, which he don't like. But it's hard keeping a job with no babysitter and daycare is closing so early now due to the pandemic. I just feel like I'm keeping him trapped from him, I guess, enjoying his 20s. He assures me that sex isn't the most important thing in a relationship, but it's the only thing that's, but it's the only thing that's messing us up right now. And I don't know if I'll ever have the confidence to date anybody else just to save myself from the embarrassment. This is a really good one. I'm glad we're ending on this one. Um, all right, so I'm going to kind of switch hats a little bit because you know I'm usually an advocate for saving yourself for marriage and having sex while you're in a marriage but that's not the case here so I'm going to give her advice based on her situation so we're going to talk about your boyfriend in a second but right now I want to talk about you I need you to do this for your babies do it for your kids do it for yourself I need you to work on yourself right now. Don't worry about trying to like have sex or pleasing your boyfriend and blah, blah, blah. I need you to get yourself healthy so that your kids are okay. Because I need you to seek professional help to help you get out of this funk that you're in so that you can be the best mom. I'm not, and I'm not saying that you're a bad mom at all, but when I was depressed, the being depressed with no kids sounds a hell of a lot easier than being depressed with a child and being pregnant and a man who was like I need to it's just I need you to do something I need you to do this for your think about your kids think about your kids and get healthy for your kids I need you to get right for your babies and I can't tell you how 
because getting right for everyone is different. Like I went back home for a little bit and then I moved back out when the time was right and I've been feeling much better, but I don't have kids. So I getting right for everyone is gonna look different. I think that your main priority right now should be less of, oh, I need to make sure that I can please my man and I need you to get more about, I need to get healthy. I need to get out of this, out of this depression because I need you to be at your best so that you can take care of your kids. Now, obviously, I can see why you would want to make sure you don't lose your man because who wants to be depressed with two kids and a single mom? Nobody. So I definitely can see why you would want to like salvage what you've got going on. I'm not saying you're wrong for that at all. I need your man to be as understanding as he can be, okay? Oh, okay. All right. You know what? I'm gonna be honest with myself and say that I am having a hard time answering this question. I just am. And I don't know, I'm feeling kind of emotional because I feel really bad. I do. Um, but I'm having a really hard time answering this question because it's, it's really easy for me to be like, oh, girl, you leave him. But I can't say that because I'm telling you, I don't, I don't wanna sit here and be like, oh, you leave him and now you're a single mom with two kids while I'm going to sleep peacefully at night and there's no kids cr crying for me to you know, feed them or change them, like, I just can't do that. What I would say, okay, this is what I'm gonna try to say and then I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna stop here because I don't know if I'm helping at all. I really don't know. So what I'm just gonna try to say is, as I always do say, let's have a conversation. Find time, I know it's probably rough, you got a two year old and you're pregnant and you guys are working different hours. So maybe you can get a babysitter that night, like a family, family member or a friend to have your daughter out of the house. Let's start there. Have a conversation about where you guys should go next. Have a conversation about, tell him you, I am trying. Like, I am not feeling my best. I am trying and I know you've been patient. Like, I know you've been patient with me. I love you so much. I, of course, I want us to stay together. But right now, I just need time to get myself together for our children. You can stay or you can go, but I have to let you know that my focus right now is getting right, getting healthy, so that I can be the best mother to our child right now. Sorry y'all, my card got full and I had to erase some stuff and I don't really fully remember what I was saying, but anyways, I'm pretty sure I was saying that you just need to let him know you're trying your best. You can't promise that the sex life is gonna be back to normal as of right now, especially since you are pregnant. And at this point, you kinda of have to leave him with the choice, but let him know right now your first priority are your children. Y'all are not married, okay? Your first priority are your children, are your children, are your children. So in order for your, your children to be right, you gotta be right. And I, I gotta say that, like, and you cannot focus on pleasing everybody else and not be taking care of yourself. Like you have to kind of put yourself first right now in order for you to like get everybody else right, you know? So you kind of gotta just let him know like, I can't do this right now. <laughs> I'm not saying you need to break up with him, but I'm saying to see if he'll be able to be understanding that right now, you just need some time to get yourself together. You, you don't give him a time. Don't be like, just give me six months. Don't give him that time limit because he could be like, all right, I'll give you six months and then six months comes up and you're not there yet and he's gonna leave. You're just like, I don't know how long it's gonna take. I love you. I know you love me. But be realistic about the situation. I don't know how much longer you can do this. But I mean, if he is a man, a real man who loves you unconditionally, loves his children. I can't really, I'm not, I'm not gonna say it, but take care of yourself, sis. Take care of yourself so that you can take care of your children. That is all I'm gonna say on that. I hope I did some type of justice for you guys. I really hope I did. I really hope I did. Um, anyhow, love you guys so much. I am gonna have to do another one soon because I have way more emails and I, really, I think I only answered four, but 
they took so long and I can't have a three hour video because who's editing that? <laughs> Not me. So anyways, I love you guys so much. If you have any questions or any new advice, email me at askonlyonejess at gmail.com and I will try to answer them in an upcoming video. Other than that, I love you guys so much and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Failure ain't an option. You looking clean, clean, clean. Failure ain't an option, an option. You looking clean.